Hey, Alicia. Thank you for meeting me here. Hello. Um, I wanted to thank you for a great day. I think you did really well today as your first day as a student, SRNA. Thanks. Um, the way that I like to do the evaluations is I like to go over it. Um, first, I'll have you answer the questions and let me know how well you think you did. And then I'll put my input on that. Okay. Sounds okay? fair. All right. So we'll just start right from the top. So for setup and preparation, how well did you think you did with that today? I think I had all my um, equipment that we needed. I did um, get the syringes ready as well. I had all the medications, of course, except for the narcotics. Um, I had the right um, size blades and the right size um, endotracheal tube. So I think as far as my setup, and I made sure that the amber bag was, was there as well as, you know, enough oxygen and nitrous in the, in the, um, in the, um, machine so yeah and I did my machine check too how do you think I did with that yes um, I think you did really well I liked how you checked all the tanks I saw you checking the tanks and I even noticed you noting the numbers so okay. that we knew how much was in there um, I saw you checking for the suction and the ambu and I liked how you had everything so organized all of your emergency equipment even though we were just going we were going to do a math case for the toe amputation you still had all your emergency intubation equipment there ready mm -hmm. and then on top you had the um the equipment that you plan to use so i thought that was very organized and um all of your doses for your medications they were appropriate okay so next is your pre-anesthetic patient preparation and assessment um i did see the patient but you know one of them spoke spanish so it was really hard for me to um, communicate with them but i i did my very best with you know the words that I knew so thank you for filling in with that but overall I mean I I think I did well I, I looked in epic to make sure that I checked you know what their labs were and um, I looked at you know their clearance their EKGs the echo although we didn't really need it for the Mac but why not be prepared well yeah. I don't think we needed it for the Mac did we need it for the Mac <laughs> We well, it, right? <laughs> I liked how you had your, your page set up. I like mm -hmm. that you looked in Epic first because sometimes our patients, depending on their their mental state or how much they remember, you know, they can tell you that they have no history and you look into their chart and they have a lot of history. Mm -hmm. So I always use, I always take the time myself to look in Epic to see kind of a baseline of everything and then you can go from there. I like that you had everything written before you came to see the patient and then while you saw the patient you just still went over head to toe and you made sure that everything was written down and that you had a really good assessment there and even though you were struggling a little bit with the Spanish you were still able to do a complete head to toe assessment. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, how do you feel that you did with your plan of anesthesia? Um, you know since it's my first time out on the floor I was a little bit apprehensive so I know for the toe amputation I was thinking that it wasn't going to be as stimulating but I still wanted to make sure that I had all my general anesthetic stuff available so I don't know if I did like overkill on that but I mean I, I think I did okay with my setup and making sure that I knew what medications to give the patient and yeah I think you did well. Your plan of anesthesia, yes, we plan to do a MAC anesthesia. This patient does have diabetes and possible neuropathy of the toe, so kind of figuring they may not be having too much stimulation or pain. But it's, I think it's always better to have everything there ready to go and prepared or close than trying to scramble and get all that stuff ready. So I think you did a really well, good job. You know, you plan for MAC anesthesia, but you explained MAC and general anesthesia to the patient. So they knew that if the MAC did not work out, that it was general anesthesia and they consented to that. Okay. How do you feel like you did as far as your knowledge base, equipment, pharmacology, pathophysiology? Um, I think I did okay. I knew like my equipment because I did all that stuff in SimLab. Um, my pharmacology as well, I, I, I think I was pretty okay with that. I'm still kind of learning my medications because a lot of these meds are new to me, like even ketamine. Um, you know, I would like to use ketamine 
I don't know if you'll let me use it if I work again with you, but for Mac, I think ketamine would have been good for him. He didn't have any heart issues, so. Um, I think I did good overall. Yes, I think your pathophysiology, you based on his assessment, you were able to tell me um, things that we'd be looking for in his anesthetic management. Pharmacology, any pharmacology questions that I asked you about the propofol and the receptors. I don't know if you remember, I asked you about ketamine and the receptors, and you just say MNDA. So I feel like, you know, there's always going to be learning, and it's just the beginning, and you're going to continue to learn as you go. But I think that any of the questions that I asked you, you were able to rattle off pretty quickly. Or if you didn't know it right away, I was able to steer you a little bit, and you were able to get to the answer. So I think you're doing well there. Um, I think that um, includes also the application of your knowledge base to the anesthetic patient care. I think that one and the knowledge base go together because with the pathophysiology and the anesthesia care, those go together. Your psychomotor skills, I did see you, um, we did do, we did place one IV in the pre-op area for that patient because the nurse was unable to. And I was there when you were doing that, and I thought you did a really good job. You were being very compassionate with the patient, very informative, and um, very nice with that. Did you have any other? I mean, the airway, we didn't really get to do much airway today except, um, well, the nasal tra trumpet that you placed. Mm -hmm. And I thought you were very good with that, very um, smooth and um and smart and quick to put it in. When you realize that the patient wasn't doing so well with his breathing, you um, asked to place that. Mm -hmm. Any other thing here on the psychomotor skills you think that um, you can yeah, mention? I want to intubate somebody. Yeah. yeah. I guess I'll get there. That's soon. Okay. This is your first day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. soon. You'll get there. Um, anesthetic management. How do you think you did with induction, maintenance, and emergence with the MAC cases that we did? Um, you know, like giving the, it, it was kind of hard for me to figure out like how much, um, propofol to give the patient initially, but I don't know what your suggestion is. Cause of course I can't give them a full 200 milligrams, but, um, you know, I would like, how much do you usually, do you usually give like half of their weight up front? Like if they weigh 80 kilos, do you give like 40 milligrams to kind of get them under and then, you know, titrating the rest on the pump, or what do you do? Well, what I like to do, um, especially with these patients who are not always as stable, mm -hmm. options that you could do, yes, you can do with one milligram, one and a half milligram per kilo. That's an option. Or what you can do is right when you come in, of course, you do your anesthesia, um, uh, what is it? Timeout. Check timeout. Mm -hmm. After that, I connect the, the propofol and you start it. Mm -hmm. That way you have the whole time of getting the patient ready, all of those things. Meanwhile, propofol. Yes, yeah, so that way you have the IV trickling in while you're doing everything and um, it gets them um, into a comfortable state at a, smooth, at a smoother rate instead of hitting them with a larger dose of propofol, maybe becoming apneic or, okay. you know, catch, trying to play a little catch up. So the next, um, the next, is documentation and patient report communication. So I know you had mentioned that you worked at Cleveland Clinic and they used Epic. So I was trying to let you play a little bit with the computer. I know it's a little difficult managing the patient in the beginning and um, documenting. Did you have any questions or um, any concerns about that? Well, Epic, I mean, it, it it's different when like being a floor nurse versus in the OR, but I mean, I think I did pretty decently with the charting. I know as time goes by, I'll kind of catch up with that. Okay. How do you think you did well with professionalism and teamwork? Um, I think I did okay. What do you say about that? <laughs> I think you did well. Okay. I can tell that um, you were very professional with everything that you did. And teamwork, you were always willing to help out wherever you could go above and beyond, you know. I thought you did really well with that. Overall evaluation, I think you did very well. I'm very um, happy with your first day in clinical. I think you did really good. Thank you. You kept a really positive attitude, and I think that you're going to do really well. Thanks. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.